Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Kat and today I'm going to be talking to you about all the books I'm really excited to read in spring. So a while ago I decided that I wasn't going to do any more monthly TBRs just because I never really stick to them. I feel like if I constrain myself with what I read every single month it never really works out and I'm definitely very much a mood reader but having said that there are always books that I feel like I get around to in the space of a few months that I'm really interested in reading, really excited for and a lot of that is down to the seasons. You'll find me reading more thrillers and horrors in autumn and more romances in the summer and stuff like that. So yeah I thought I'd introduce some kind of seasonal TBRs to my channel, tell you guys what I'm excited to read. Okay let's get into the book. So the book that I'm most excited for I think is like the highest priority on my TBR at the moment is Lonely Castle in the Mirror by Mizuki Sujimura and this is one that I've had on my radar for like quite a while. I know that the kind of standard UK paperback is due to come out at some point this year. It might have already come out but this is kind of like the larger um, one with like the French flaps and I picked this up from the bookstore I was working at towards the beginning of the year so I'm actually really surprised that I haven't read this yet. So this one's definitely fantastical and it's about these group of teenagers living in Tokyo. I don't know if they know each other. One night they all experience the exact same thing. They wake up and their mirror is glowing, the mirror in their bedroom and they end up all going through the mirror into this world and they end up in this castle. I think there's something living in the castle that wants to like eat them or get to them before sunrise and they have to like try and figure out why they're in the castle. But yeah apparently it's really really beautiful kind of Ghibli-esque which is definitely my cup of tea. I've been meaning to read more books that have Ghibli vibes. This is one that I definitely want to read soon probably this month. If I did have a monthly TBR this would be on April's and I noticed today that it had the most beautiful first line and it says I sometimes find myself dreaming and I put that in an Instagram caption. <laughs> oh it's so beautiful and I can't wait to read this one. Speaking of Ghibli, my next pick for my spring TBR is How's Moving Castle by Diana Wynne Jones. This was gifted to me by my sister on my birthday so it's this beautiful hardcover edition. It's got its own little case and on the inside it's even more beautiful. So there's the castle and Sophie and then there's a spider web on the back. But yeah obviously this inspired the movie How's Moving Castle. I've heard that it's not exactly the same. I think the movie deviates from the book. Obviously a lot more people would probably prefer the movie just because of the magic of Ghibli and Hayao Miyazaki but I'm so excited to give this a go. It's actually a series so this is the first in a trilogy I believe and you better believe if I enjoy this I will be getting the other two hopefully in the same edition. There's some really beautiful chapter pages and illustrations as well which is so magical. I did actually start reading this last month. I read like a chapter or two and I'm already in love so I can't wait to read the rest of this this spring. It definitely gives me spring vibes. The next book is another one that I've started and haven't finished and that is Cleopatra and Frankenstein by Coco Mellors. I was lucky enough to get an art copy from the publisher. I did start it and I actually started highlighting in it as well because I just thought the writing was so beautiful and I love so much of the quotes like the characters were so interesting but I didn't get very far in it just because I don't think I was in the right mood for it so I'm hoping at some point this spring I will be. This one sounds like a toxic romance so it's about these two people who meet in New York one of them's from the UK and they end up getting married and I think it's kind of about how that one decision like affects their whole lives and the people around them all of the ugly ways as well as like the good ways but yeah I didn't get very far and I am really excited to carry on reading this. The next book on this list is The Goddess Chronicle by Natsuo Carino. This is an author I've read from before and really loved and this is kind of a different story by her so she usually writes kind of horrors and thrillers. There are these three books that she's really well known for. One of them is Out which I do own and like plan on reading but probably in the autumn. So I believe this is a retelling of Japanese mythology. It's based on the Japanese myth of Izanami and Izanagi. It's these two sisters. One of them is like really loved. The other one is an oracle which is really interesting and I think she's the one that we end up following. I believe they're both already dead or at least the one that we're following is. I don't know too much about it but I really want to get into some more like kind of modern retellings of old like myths and legends. I'm really intrigued by this one. So a book that I picked up from the bookstore recently is Lemon by Kwon Yeo Sun and this one I have featured on my Instagram. I haven't started it yet but everybody wants to know my thoughts already. So it's kind of branded as a thriller but the tagline says this is not a murder story, it is the story of those left behind. Um, so I think it's more like a social commentary on women in Korea and kind of like the obsession with like women going missing or like women being murdered and stuff like that. I might be getting that completely wrong but that's kind of the gist that I've gotten from reading the synopsis. It's set in the summer at a high school 
in 2002, which is the year my sister was born actually, wow. And yeah, it follows this murder case of one of the like really beautiful girls at school. So it should definitely have some elements of like a crime novel or kind of like a true crime vibe. Other than that, I don't really know anything about this one and I'm so excited to I think just sit down one day like on a warm spring day in the park and just like read the whole thing because it's actually really short as well which I love. You'll definitely see me read this one soon and hopefully I will give all of my thoughts on it in a wrap up or a vlog. Sorry I haven't read this yet. <laughs> one book that absolutely caught my eye and I couldn't stop thinking about it so I just had to start it is Yinka Where Is Your Husband by Lizzie Damilola Blackburn and this is one that I downloaded on Audible a couple of nights ago. I started listening to it, I think I've got a chapter in and it's already really funny and I've just fallen in love with the main character. So it follows this 31 year old South Londoner and she's literally just been hounded by her aunties and her mother her whole life to find a man and settle down and her cousin's actually getting married. So that pressure's kind of amped up and I think the book follows her journey trying to find a date. I think her mum and her aunties like all get involved and like start meddling and like she belongs to this like massive Nigerian family and the book already has so much character. I just love where it started. It's already such a charming read. I think it's ultimately going to be more about like finding yourself and figuring out what's more important in life and that you'll find love when you're meant to kind of thing. I just couldn't not download that audiobook because I'm so excited for it. It's also a debut and I'm so impressed so far. This next book will be absolutely no surprise to anyone and that is Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I think everybody knows what this is about. I especially want to read it soon because the TV show is supposed to be coming out I think at some point this year. I know it was pushed back at some point but yeah I definitely want to read this before the show comes out because I'll want to watch that straight away. I kind of want to read most of Taylor Jenkins Reid's backlist before her new book comes out as well. Pretty sure it's called Carrie Soto is back or something like that and I have pre-ordered it because it's a book like that revolves around like a tennis player which is so exciting. Tennis is one of the only sports I actually find joy watching. So yeah, I'm gonna read this and then I think Malibu Rising and then I'll be able to read the new one coming out. So yeah, that's pretty much why this is on my TBR. I think it's gonna like force me to get into gear and like finally read this because I've been meaning to for so long, honestly. Another book where it is a crime that I actually haven't read it yet is The Spanish Love Deception by Elena Armas. <laughs> what is wrong with me? So this is a book that Caitlin actually gifted me, which was really, really sweet. I appreciate her so much. Like she is a babe. She's the best. But yeah, as soon as she sent me this I did actually start reading it. I think lately I haven't really been in the mood for a romance which is finally changing and that's why this is on my TBR. This is definitely one of my most anticipated reads on this list. So this one follows Catalina, also a lovely name. Catalina is going to a wedding and I think her ex-boyfriend or somebody is bringing a date and like he's already in like a new relationship. She seems to think that she's going to be really embarrassed if she shows up back home without anybody and just like single. She just thinks that would be like mortifying for her. She kind of wants to find someone to fake date for a little while and like take to the wedding. And this guy at her office actually volunteers to take on the role of her fake boyfriend. But the thing is, is that they actually hate each other, or at least she hates him. It seems like it's gonna be like a really dramatic hate to love. It's definitely my favorite trope. And I've heard that this is quite slow run as well, which is a massive bonus for me. It does sound like the perfect romance. So I'm incredibly excited to start this very soon. Okay, it is finally time for another Mary HK toy to be in my life. This is permanent record. And this is the first book that I got by her. But then I realized that I wanted to read them in publication order. So I started with Emergency Contact, which ended up being one of my top 10 reads of last year so I really love that one. I want to read this next one so bad because this is the one that I was initially drawn to the most out of the three. It's about a college dropout Pablo who ends up meeting this pop star called Liana and yeah I think they fall in love and I think it's a romance but I think Mary HK Choi will be definitely discussing some more interesting topics within that. I know she loves to like hit hard with certain topics. That's what I loved so much about Emergency Contact. So I've definitely found myself not reading as many YA books but this one is one that I would love to read. There are still a handful of YA books that I am very interested in and would never rule out. This is probably my favourite book I own as well in terms of the cover. I just think it's the most beautiful artwork. I'm obsessed with it. I'm obsessed with the colours. I'm so happy right now that I'm talking about this and that I'm saying I'm going to read it because I couldn't think 
of anything better. This book really needs to get read now. So if you watch my channel, you'll know that I've read Gallant recently and it was my last five star read. And it's definitely one of my favorite books of this year so far. Having loved Gallant so much, I think it's about time that I should read Addie LaRue by B.E. Schwab. Apparently the writing style is like quite similar and just like magical and beautiful and haunting and all of those good things. But I am definitely gonna go into this book with kind of like low expectations just because I've heard some people just don't like it at all, don't like the pacing, think that it's a really slow start and just think that it's a whole load of nothing. I absolutely love the illustrations in Gallon and this one also has illustrations. I just think that's going to heighten the reading experience for me and I am really, really excited to read this one. So I recently finished Dracula, finally, after over a year of reading. I finally... <laughs> finished it and I'm so excited because today I'm actually going to be watching Bram Stoker's Dracula, the movie with Gary Oldman and Winona Ryder and who else? Freaking Keanu Reeves. I'm going to watch that iconic movie for the first time. But anyway, I finished a classic and I think I'm ready for another one. So I'm going to be picking up Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen. I think springtime is the perfect time. It's like Austen's season. Like I just feel like if you get it, you get it. I think that I'd love to just read a bunch of Jane Austen's books in the spring. And I'm gonna start with Sense and Sensibility because this is her first book. I think this was her first like major novel that was published. And the reason that I'm gonna be reading these is because Caitlin, my lovely friend that I mentioned earlier in this video, actually has a patron and on her patron, she's buddy reading all of the Jane Austen books throughout this year. In January and February, we were supposed to have read Sense and Sensibility and I didn't, but I think I'm ready now. I just, I don't think that was the time. I did start Pride and Prejudice when I was in sixth form and I didn't finish it because it was so similar to the BBC series that I was just a bit bored because I knew what was happening. I think if I read that now, which I'm going to be reading next actually, so I should add Pride and Prejudice to this TBR. I think if I read that now, I'd really enjoy it and I think I would just get so much out of it. So I can't wait to read both of those books. I think this is like the cutest edition as well. I'm really glad that I got this. I'm definitely gonna annotate. It looks quite long, but I'm ready. I think I'm ready for the challenge. The last set of books that I'm going to be talking about were given to me by a colleague. She's actually going back to the US for a few months and she has a bunch of books here, but she can't take them back with her. So she's lending me a few to read before she gets back. And most of them are poetry, so I'm really excited. Like she's like one of the biggest reasons why I got into poetry this year. So she's lent me a few of her collections that she thinks that I would enjoy. So the first one is The Sun and Her Flowers by Rupi Kaur. And I haven't read any of Rupi Kaur's poetry yet. It seems really beautiful. I'm so glad that she's uh, given me this collection to try because it seems absolutely perfect for spring. It's all about flowers. And I flipped to a page earlier and there's a poem about a bee and romance. And yeah, it just seems really lovely. The other poetry collections are Between You and These Bones by F.D. Soul, Wild Embers by Nikita Gill, which are poems of rebellion, fire and beauty. And the collected shorter poems of W.H. Auden between 1927 and 1957. And this is obviously probably gonna be the most different from me, but she thought that I would enjoy them. So I'm gonna give it a go. And and then the other book that she gave me that I'm so excited about and I'm gonna end this video on is One Day in Wonderland and this is by Kathleen Krull and Julia Sada and it's basically a celebration of Alice in Wonderland and Lewis Carroll so I believe that it's kind of like a storybook about Lewis Carroll's life and it's just got these absolutely beautiful illustrations like they're so quirky and fun and really remind me of Over the Garden Wall actually but yes that is my spring TBR I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video I hope you guys enjoyed me gushing about all the books that I want to read definitely let me know down below in the comment section which book you are most excited to read in the spring season and if you made it this far in the video leave a flower emoji any flower emoji your favorite flower thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next one bye